Today I'm presenting on diatoms and paleomology, and this is a pretty basic general presentation, um, and it's mainly for you to understand more about these two ideas. So please ask lots of questions. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, this is <laughs> really just very, very informal. Um, so first we're going to talk. So an overview. First we're going to talk about diatoms, uh, their evolution and morphology, and why they're important to us and why we are important to them. And then diatoms in paleomelanology, um, as Nadine alluded to, why do we choose to use diatoms, the goals of paleomelanology, and then I'm going to go through some of the methods that we use in um, some of the studies I've done. And then I'll briefly talk about the two studies I've done, uh, Lake Mokwe Magog and then Lake Superior, which is just starting up. And you'll all be experts in how to say Mokwe Magog. So first, diatom morphology. Diatoms are algae. Uh, <laughs> do we all know what algae is? <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of a diatom before today? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, some people have no idea what it is. Algae is a very diverse group of organisms. It's not very clearly defined. They're usually aquatic. They're usually photosynthetic. Um, so diatoms are algae with golden brown chloroplasts. And you can actually see them bloom in usually in the spring or in kind of later in the fall um, before the green algae really shows up. You get this like lovely golden brown color that's mostly diatoms. And something that makes them really special is that they have silica walls. So they're basically made out of glass. And evolutionarily, um, silica as a skeletal component showed up after carbon. So they're slightly more advanced than we are, say. And it's really pretty clever because carbon is not always very available in the environment, but silica um, is very available, especially in aquatic habitats. So they found a way to use a, uh, an element that's usually around, <laughs> sometimes like superior that's just around. Um, and they're usually divided into two parts. It's called a frustule, so the whole box, if you will, is a frustule. And they're kind of shaped like a, pill a pillbox, so one side is larger than the other, and that has some implications um, with the way they reproduce and grow. And uh, so they have two valves, which are the bases, and then they're held together by girdle bands, which are kind of like rubber bands or glue that hold them together. And so when they grow, they don't grow larger in diameter, say, they grow taller, like a stack of pancakes. They'll just keep dividing, and every time they divide, they'll add a girdle band or, or so. Um, so that's some basic morphology. And something that makes diatoms really cool to study is their diversity. They're extremely diverse. There are over 200 genera, 100,000 species that we know of. Um, we estimate that there are millions of species, several that we haven't found yet. They're found in pretty much every aquatic habitat you can think of lakes, um, oceans, polar ice caps, um, the insides of cave walls. Like if there's any moisture, there's usually a diatom around. And they are just beautiful in their array of shapes. Uh, they can make any sh almost any shape. Uh, we have stars, we have um, a lot of them are round. Uh, we have ones that look like Pringles. Um, so we have all kinds. And they usually break down into two very, yeah, how do you get the colors? They're not colored. Uh, oh. That is um, people adding colors to them to make them look pretty. Uh, if you just look at them under a normal microscope, they're black and white. Great. And that's because they're glass. So there's no color to them. It's basically looking at glass. Um, if you have a very large diatom, sometimes they'll diffract the white, so you kind of get colors like a spectrum but most of the time they're just fine. Um, so we split them up into two very general groups. One is uh, the centrics, which are the round ones, and the pennants, which are the ones that are not round. And within the pennants, they get a little bit more um, confused. This line right here, that's called a wraith. And a wraith is what diatoms use to move. And those are usually found in diatoms that live attached to substrate, something else. So 
So diatoms can be found living on rocks, on plants and other algae. Uh, there are diatoms that specialize in living on individual grains of sand. Um, so they're really all over the place. And they use those, um, they exude some of their cytoplasm and use it to move. So I know on YouTube you can look up videos of diatoms cruising around. So it's kind of funny to look at because you wouldn't think of a, a, a plant or an algae plant type animal thing being a moving around like an animal. And um, the round ones are usually planktonic, uh, so they float in the water column. So they're very diverse in their morphology and their ecology. 